All right, so today we start the very last topic we're going to be covering. It's actually part of the previous topic, but it's the applications of exponential and logarithmic functions. So there are a number of different types of problems we're going to be going over, but this is going to take a long time. So we're going to be doing this on Monday also. So you're going to get two days of exponential growth and exponential decay. So the first thing we're going to start on is a version of exponential growth that applies to finances. Continuous compounding. The closest uh, picture I get in my mind of continuous compounding is try to think of a supercomputer compounding interest every second of the day and night all year long. It never stops. Okay. There's a formula we use that that is often called by math teachers a pert a a pert where this is the accumulated amount of money after time this is the original amount of money this is the number e and it's raised to the power uh, of the interest rate written as a decimal times time in years so A and P and R and T are exactly the same thing as they were before. Only now E has entered into the picture. Suppose that $15,237 is invested at an interest rate of 6.6% .6 per year, compounded continuously. Find the exponential function that describes the amount of in the account after time t in years. OK, first you need to know this is called the general formula for compound interest. General formula. need more room. General formula. What, what part A is asking for is the specific formula that is taking this general formula and applying it to the specific situation we have in front of us. So A is going to be the money after time, and that time is found in B, one year, two years, five years, 10 years, and um, I didn't write down the, uh, uh, well, well, that's just me saying what the instructions are for your answer. Uh, two decimal places is what we're going to be rounding to. OK, anyway, A is the amount of money after time. All right, P is the original amount of money. R is the interest rate written as a decimal. And T is the number of years.
the years the money is in the bank. OK, and I have no idea why I put a colon there. I could have put in equals, but who knows? All right, off it goes. Completely forgot. There we go. Um, OK, so. We don't know what A is, but we do know what P is. P is $15,237. R is 6.6% 6 .6 written as a decimal. 0 0.066. And we're compounding continuously T is the number of years. We aren't told that in part A. So what we're going to do now is find the specific formula. Put the A here. Okay, we're going to have A equals P 15,237 times E raised to the power 0 0.066 T. This is going to be our formula that we're going to be using for parts B and C. A equals 15,237 times E raised to the 0 0.066 T power. Now B, we're going to use this formula with T equals one, T equals two, T equals five, and T equals 10. So we're going to be finding for T equals one, A equals 15, 237 times e to the point 0 0.066 times 1. And then for t equals 2, we'll have 15, 237 e to the point 0 0.066 times 2. And for t equals 5, so on and so forth, 15, 237 times e to the point 0 0.066 times 5. And finally, a equals 15, 237 e to the point 0 0.066 times 10. You notice that the year is the only thing that's changing, the number of years. Everything else in our formula is going to stay exactly the same. So let's do this. I've changed my calculator. Now it might have gone back. I don't know. I doubt it. I've changed my calculator to the classic, the old operating system. So, so that people with the old operating system can see how you do this. Something important to know is that E raised to a power, okay, you can get that automatically ready for you to put the power in if you hit the second key, so second and then the LN key. Second LN gives you E to the power and then you put in the power. So we're going to do that in this way. For T equals one, we'll have 15, 237.
I probably don't have to hit times, but I do. Now, e to the power, I'm going to get by hitting second, ln. And see, I've got the old operating system now, so what that gave me was e, caret, left parenthesis. And I'm now going to type 0 0.066 times one, the year. Close parentheses. Enter. And that's the answer I get. And I have to round to two decimal places. But what I want to do is do this again. I'm going to hit second, enter, and that gives me a copy of this. Now what I'm going to do is hit the left arrow key once. Now the cursor is flashing over the right parenthesis. Hit the left arrow key again. Now the cursor is blinking over the one, and I'm going to change that to a two. And that's all I have to do. Look what I've got. 15,237 times E caret left parenthesis 0 0.066 times 2 right parenthesis. And those are the same keystrokes that you use even with the updated operating system. Okay, enter. So there are the answers to the first two. Let me write that down. Copy it down. There, so that'll be the first two. Kind of try to line it up a little bit there. That's much better. Okay, flatten. Now the reason I want to do this is to let you see what you get from your calculator. This is the answer to t equals 1. This is the answer to t equals 2. OK. Now we're going to go second, enter. And I'm going to go back. And I'm going to change the 2 to a 5. By the time we finish scrolling down, you won't be able to see all of those first entries. That's the reason I'm doing it this way. So now we have 15,237 times E caret left parenthesis 0 0.066 times 5 right parenthesis. There it is right there. And that's for year five. So that's how much money we have in the bank. $21,194.18. And then for T equals 10, I hit second, enter. And then all I have to do is back up to the five. I'll type in a 10. Now I've got to type in my right parenthesis. No way around it, 10 is two digits, so it wiped out the right parenthesis. I had to put it back. Now I have 15,237 times E left parenthesis 0 0.066 times 10 right parenthesis. I'm going to hit enter. All right, now, Okay, good. I have 294.80 and 43 cents. So let us copy this as well.
kind of line them up a little bit. There we go, flatten. Now this is how much you get. Let's make this bigger. For t equals five. And t equals 10. Let me put my colons. And now we have to round to two decimal places, right? Okay. Well, in this first answer, that's easy. The first two decimal places are followed by a zero. That's not going to round anything up. For t equals two, we're going to have 17,387 and 0 0.6 cents, but the third decimal place is a seven, and that will round this six up to a seven. Now the other two uh, answers don't have that problem. For T equals five, I have $21,194.18. The 18 cents is followed by a one. That's not going to round anything up. And for T equals 10, I have $29,480.43, followed by a zero. Definitely not gonna round anything up. Okay, so from using your calculator, whether you do each one by hand carefully or whether you choose to use the second enter so you don't have to add each input separately. Those are the answers you'll get for B. This is just what we call plugging and chugging, kind of brainless. Once you get the idea, that all you do is take, ah, okay, take that, stick it in the calculator, hit enter. Of course, it takes some thinking to figure out what is the best way to do that. There's Henrietta, she obviously has not gotten something that she wants. C is something you have not encountered before unless you went to a really good high school. And that is doubling time, doubling time. Very important in finances. If you're a business major, get used to the term doubling time. If you work at a bank, doubling time is important. Doubling time is how long does it take you, not you, how long does it take your money to double from the amount you put in in the beginning? Here's the formula for that. two times the original amount equals the original amount times e to the r t. This is all based on a equals p naught, the, the original amount, times e to the r t. Only now the amount you have after time is twice the original amount. Okay, so since our original amount was 15,237, I'll have two times 15,237 equals 15,237 times e to the point 066t. And we're going to be solving for T. How many years will it take to get this much money? Notice I didn't multiply them together. 
That's because of what I'm going to do next. I'm going to divide both sides by the P naught number. 15 to 37. 15 to 37. That's going to cause 15 to 37 to cancel out on both sides of the equal sign. So all you have left is a two. Is that cool? Yes, it is. It's also how the help me solve this and show me an example in my math lab. Get the two over there. OK, so two equals point zero six six T. Cool. All I need to do now is bring the T down and only one thing will do that, and that's a logarithm. And the logarithm I choose when I'm dealing with an E is the natural logarithm ln. So I'm going to take the ln of 2 and the ln of e to the 0 0.066t. Let me double check and make sure. 0 0.066, okay. Didn't want to get that wrong. All right, so we're now going to use the property, the, um, um, the what? the power rule of exponents to bring this power down in front. So we'll have the ln of two equals 0 0.066t times the ln of e. And you'd need to memorize that the ln of e equals one. So this time, but probably not in the future, I'm going to go to the extra step of doing this. The ln of two equals 0 0.066t times one, which of course is just 0 0.066t equals the ln of Two. Now to solve for t, all I have to do is divide both sides by the number in front of t. 0 0.066. Cancels out over here, leaving me with t. And what I have here, before we go on, what I have here is called the exact answer. Exact solution. Exact solution. Much better. What? Sorry, I can't sit on my computer. You're having trouble with your computer. Is that what you said? No, I had a cat walk across my keyboard and then sit on it. Ah, I'm familiar with that problem. Yes, indeed. I usually scream. All right, let's find out what this number is. And I'm also going to round to two decimal places. Probably not. No, as I recall, they want you to round this to the nearest whole number of years. So let's do that. LN of two, close parentheses divided by 0 0.066, enter. 
So we'll have 10 and a half years actually, a little over 10 and a half. 10.5 and then followed by a zero, two, two, three, zero, zero, one. So I could say 10.5 or I could just say 10. I'm round up to 11. Yes, okay. Eleven years. Though I personally think ten and a half would be better. So let me get a picture of this too. I think it's valuable to just include photos. Since we have time, we're going to be on this for two days. I might as well add these to your notes. So that when you go back over them, if you go back over them, you'll see what the calculator did. And that can be very, very helpful. What are you doing? I love it. I love it. Never mind. Heck with you. OK, so let's bring this down. Here's our first problem. What did we do? Well, first, we had to find the exponential function that describes this scenario, and that's called the specific uh, compound, uh, a continuous compounding formula. Specific meaning specific to this particular problem. Then, oh, and we got that from the general formula, which is up here, the general continuous compounding formula. Then once we had the specific formula, we could find out what the balance in the bank was after one year, two years, five years, and 10 years rounded to two decimal places, that is rounded to the cents, C-E-N-T-S. And then we found the doubling time, which is the time it takes for the original amount of money to double. Okay. Your book gives you a formula if you're the kind of person who likes a formula. Um, I'd rather get it myself so I don't have to memorize it. But there is a formula for doubling time Formula for doubling time. You can see it yourself if you go to question helps and click on show me how to do this or show me an example. Okay, formula for doubling time is the LN of two over R equals the doubling time. R written as a decimal. R is always written as a decimal when you try to calculate with it. Except for the very last problem nice to be inconsistent sometimes. I don't think so. OK. All right, so. If you don't want to have to memorize the formula, and I think you've got a lot of, of formulas to memorize, this is how you would do it. 
you have two times the original amount on the left, the original amount times e to the rt, with again r written as a decimal, and then you just go through the steps. You always divide out the number in front of the e. Always, always, always. So that you're left with e to the to uh, e to the rt is what you're left with over here. You're left with, in fact, here you're left with two equals e to the r t. And then we take the ln of both sides. The reason we take the ln of both sides is to bring 0 0.066 t down in front so that t is accessible to us to solve for. If it stays stuck up in the um, 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 exponent, we can't get to it. Okay, so anyway, these are all the steps. And since we have two full days to do this, we're gonna do the same thing again with some different numbers. Right here. So someone I think came in late. And this will be good for you. Although quite honestly, I'm not going to go back and put all the same notes in. All right. Suppose that $19,188 is invested at an interest rate of 6.4% compounded continuously. Now this tells you everything you need to know to set up the problem. P naught, and there should be a zero there, that's the way the book does it, and it really does belong there. That little sub zero always means original or beginning. Okay, so 19,188 is P naught. And 6.4% is R written as 0 0.064. Compounded continuously is this formula right here, which is the general formula for, for continuous compounding. Now you've always got to find the specific formula, so let's just do it. We're going to have A, the amount after time, equals 19188 times e to the point zero six four t. And this is the formula we use to answer all of these questions. So for B, let's see if the times are the same. One, two, five, and 10. So let's do the first two. That's T. T is the only thing that's going to change. So the amount you have at the end of the first year is calculated this way. One, nine, one, eight, eight, times E to the point zero six four times one. And A equals 19, uh, for T equals 2, A equals 19,188 times E to the point zero six four times 2. And we'll limit ourselves to that. Um, I'm going to go back in and I'm going to update the operating system. Back up to 
meth print, which is what the newer operating system is called. Or lets you do, no, I don't want to do that. Good grief, I don't want to do that. Okay, so one nine one eight eight one nine one eight eight times second LN. Point zero six four times one. So that's what I've got right here. One nine one eight eight times E raised to the power point zero six four times one. I hit enter. That's the amount I get. Then to not have to type all this stuff again, because you're more likely to make a mistake the more often you type something over. Second, enter. All I have to do is go back two places so that the cursor is blinking over the one and hit a two. That's all. Hit enter. And that's the amount after two years. So we're supposed to round to two decimal places. Here I have 20456.18095. That zero is not going to round 18 up to 19. So the answer will be 20, four, five, six, maybe with a parenthesis, I don't, a parenthesis, comma. Uh, I don't think you have to add commas, but occasionally you do. And my math lab just sort of surprises you with that. Point 18. Um, and then this one is going to be 21808.16. Two, the nine is going to round the seven up to an eight. So our final answer for T equals two is 21808.18. And so our answers for these two will be this. And this. And since I did t equals 5 and t equals 10 before, I'm going to go on to doubling time. The amount of time it takes your initial investment to double. And we all care about that. So what we're going to do is first type our specific formula. That's probably the safest thing to do. 1918 eight times e to the point zero six four t. This is the amount after time. What we're interested in is how long will it take that amount to double? So over here on this side, I multiply this number by two. Okay, now the first thing you do, once you start solving your exponential equation here, is you divide the number in front of the T. Divide both sides by it, but do not stick it in your calculator. That's a very big deal. Every time you use your calculator on the same problem, you get more rounding off which causes a little bit of error. And then every time you use your calculator on that problem, the error is going to keep mounting until you can get the wrong answer. So just don't 
Don't use your calculator until the bitter end. Here, 19188 is going to be canceled by 19188, leaving me with a two. Two equals e to the point zero six four t. Okay, I take the ln of both sides. So that I have ln2, using the power rule, this exponent comes down in front, 0 0.064t times the ln of e, and the ln of e is 1. So this is a 1. Now 0 0.064t times 1 is just 0 0.064t. So I am going to, to find T, divide by 0 0.064. 0 0.064. Now, for those of you who are, I know I said this before, but not everybody might have been here. For those of you who absolutely love memorizing formulas, the book, give, the book my math lab, in, in question helps gives you the formula that doubling time equals equals the ln of 2 over r written as a decimal. That's what we have right here, the ln of 2 over r. But like I said, I don't like using more formulas than I need, especially when I know how to work the problem. So I'm going to take the ln of 2 divided by 0 0.064, the ln of 2 and close, <laughs> turn on your, your calculator. The ln of 2, close your parentheses, divided by 0 0.064, for enter. And this is what I get. And we're supposed to round this to the nearest um, the nearest whole number of years. 83 or 8 is going to cause the 0 to go up to a 1. So this will be about really close to this time, 11 years. So I won't quibble with 11 years. Okay. So notice that everything, everything, everything is based on A, finding the specific formula, continuous compounding formula, the specific formula from the general formula for um, um, continuous compounding. Discussion. Remember, we're not in a hurry today. There's no way we could do all of these problems. In one day, in one hour. I guess that's a good reason I can't give you all these problems on an exam, huh? Whew, glad we worked that out. Okay, now here is a problem like the Melissa problem. Problem. Remember, Melissa got a CD on her sixth 
birthday. Well, this is happening at the birth of a child. Following the birth of a child, a parent wants to make an initial investment, P naught, that will grow to $70,000 for the child's education at 18. Interest is compounded continuously at 6%. What should be what should the initial investment be? Such an amount is called the present value. Business majors take notice. Present value. Of $70,000 due 18 years from now, when we wake up on that day, A will be the present value in the future. It's too, too difficult for me. OK, so what we need first from this general formula is the specific formula. So first I'm going to write down the general formula again. And then I'm going to write down what I know. I know that the amount after time, after 18 years, is going to be $70,000. So A is going to be 70,000. And T is going to be 18, because we are starting at the baby's birth. The interest rate is 6%, which as a decimal is written 0 0.06. So now I'm going to take these values and put them into the general formula, and that will make the general formula a specific formula. So 70,000. Oh, this is the present value. They are calling P naught the present value. I'm so glad now it's not confusing. Okay, we don't know what our P naught is going to be. We have no idea. This is just a a significator, a marker, letting you know that P is the original, original amount. The present value. Okay, now E to the 0 0.06, 0 0.06, T is 18, so times 18. Well, we don't even need um, natural logarithms for this one. Look at this. This is just a number, e to the 0 0.06 times 18. Second ln gives me e to a power, 0 0.06 times 18. That's just a number. It's an ugly number, but it's a number. So I can take this number and divide both sides by it. So these cancel leaving me with P naught, the original investment. And all I have to do is put that into my calculator. So 70,000 divided by, I feel better putting it in parentheses, but I don't really think I need to. Second LN, 
We'll find out. 0 0.06 times 18. Since both of these numbers are up in that box that was up there, I don't need to worry about other parentheses. However, for the older operating system, remember you've got a parenthesis over here that you need to close. All right, let's hit enter. And this is the number I get. I get, let me write it out here, 2,3,7,7,1,0,6. Six, eight. And let me find out what the instructions are. Here's the answer. Looks like we're, aha, round to two decimal places. Okay, here are my decimal places. That six will cause the eight to round up to a nine. So our original investment, the amount we have to put in the well, whatever it is we're investing in, 23,771 dollars and 69 cents. We have to put that in the bank and then come back in 18 years. Four. $70,000, which the poor baby, now an 18-year-old, will not get to play with because her parents are going to use that for her college education. All right, so this was a short problem, and I'm going to take this and put it on this page. like that, because I happen to be at the middle of the page. And I'm also going to go back to the older operating system. See how I do this? Right here, MathPrint is the more advanced operating system. I'm going to go over to classic with a right arrow and then hit enter. And now I'm in the traditional, the classical um, operating system. And I'm going to do this again so that people with the other calculator will have a model. All right, 70,000 divided by second LN. Now you've got E caret left parenthesis, 0 0.06 times 18, and you must close that parenthesis, close. Then we hit enter. Get the same exact answer. Ah, right, okay, now. And now you have the two models for that, depending on how your calculator works. I believe if you have the newer operating system, you can do what I did and opt for the older one, if you like it better. I can see all sorts of pros to it. You can actually see your keystrokes instead of magic happening in front of you. So it's whatever you like. Do you want to discuss this?
Okay. Economics. I'm going to clear this so I'll be ready for my next calculation. Supply and demand. This is one of the big, big, big topics in finance and business. Supply and demand. Or I really ought to put supply versus demand. And these are really good explanations in this word problem. Really good explanations of what supply and demand are. So let me take a drink and I will read it out loud. No, that won't do. Okay. So back to where we were. Okay, the supply function and demand function for the sale of a certain type of DVD player are given by these formulas. S of P is 130E to the 0.004P. And the demand is D of P 416 E to the negative 0.003 P, where S of P is the number of DVD players that the company is willing to sell at price P. And D of P is the quantity that we people in the public, that the public is willing to buy at price P. Okay. So find P. What is that price? Such that the demand actually equals the supply. And that's called the equilibrium price. If you were to see them graphed, you'd see that the supply function is positive the demand function is negative and the equilibrium price is where they cross. The equilibrium price, actually they're curves. I suppose I should have done it the right way. But I was more interested in you seeing that one is growing and one is decreasing. Here's the supply function. Here's the demand function. And here's the equilibrium price. That's what we're looking for. So to be able to find that point of intersection, we have to set D of P, and it tells you how to do it. Find P such that D of P equals S of P. So they're not expecting you to just know this. Thank goodness. So we're going to do exactly what they say. So we're going to have D of P, that is the demand at the equilibrium price equals the supply at the equilibrium price. Where the price is the same, that's why it's the equilibrium price. Okay, so D of P is 416 times E to the negative 0.003p. 
and the supply function is 130 times e to the 0 0.004p. There they are. Double check. 416 times e to the negative 0.003p. That's d of p, okay. And s of p is 130 times e to the 0.004p. Yes, I wrote them correctly. Well, all right. What now? Well, I am going to take, since these are multiplied together, and they're both E functions, rather than choose one to divide the first number, you know, divide it out, I am just going to say the LN of 416e to the negative 0.003p equals the ln of 130 e to the 0.004p. That's what I'm going to do first. Now, 416 and e to that power are multiplied in the argument. 130 and e to that power are multiplied in the argument. So I am going to use the product rule of logarithms. Let me write it down, product rule. Here's what that's going to give me. It's going to give me the ln of 416 plus the ln of e to the negative 0.003p. That's what the product rule does. Equals now, sometimes you've just got to guess that this is the best way to handle it, and then maybe try another way of handling it and see if that's the best way to handle it. That's how you build up expertise. This is my first time. So the ln of 130 plus the ln of e to the 0.004p. So that's what I've got right now. Right there. The ln of 416 plus the ln of e to the negative 0.003p equals the ln of 130 plus the ln of e to the 0.004p. Cool. Now I'm going to use the, the power rule to bring the exponents down in front. So uh, power rule. We'll have the ln of 416 plus negative 0.003p times the ln of e. And you know what that is? It's one, boom, that's a one. One times anything is the thing itself. So equals the ln of 130 
plus 0 0.004 P times the ln of E, which again is one. So now here's what we've got. We've got the ln of 416, which is just a number, plus, oh, I plus minus, I could just say minus. Minus 0 0.003p equals the ln of 130, which is just a number, plus 0 0.004 P. That's what I've got. Well, this is pretty cool. I'm solving for P. All I have to do is get my P's on one side and my LNs on the other because these are LNs of numbers, which makes them just numbers. Okay, so I am going to add 0 0.003p to both sides of the equation. They zero out over here, leaving me with one lonely ln of 416 equals the ln of 130 plus 0 0.007p. Great. I now move my ln of 130. I subtract it because it's positive. I subtract it from both sides of the equation. Well, I've got room over here. Minus ln of 130. ln of 130 minus ln of 130 is zero. So I have point zero, see I have 0 0.007007 P equals the ln of 416 minus the ln of 130. My goal in life is to make life easier for me and for you. This will be much easier if we use the quotient rule of logarithms, where we can turn this into one logarithm by using the quotient rule. I'm doing that because it makes it easier to divide in the calculator and not make a mistake. I know from personal experience. The quotient rule. That's what we're gonna do. Well, let me point down here. This is where we're gonna do it. The LN of 416 over 130 equals 0 0.007 P. Now this is a number. I'm going to divide by 0 0.007 on both sides. And we will be done. Hopefully with the right answer. So 
So P equals that. Let's put it in the calculator. Let's see if I wrote it down up here. Yes, this is the answer we're striving for. Notice it's rounded to two decimal places, which is normal for money in the US. Unless you're buying gas. And then it seems to be rounded to three decimal places. Sometimes. Um, okay, so here we go. The LN of four one six divided by one three zero close parentheses divided by zero point zero zero seven. Enter. Aha, look at that. Look at that. It is so beautiful. Okay, we round to two decimal places. This four will not cause the 16 to go up to a seven. Therefore, our, our equilibrium price will be $166.16. Would you pay that much for a DVD player? I suppose if it was really good. And I were really into music. I used to be. Man, my ex-husband, he would spend all our money on, on sound equipment. He loved his music. We both agreed on the Stones, which is probably how we stayed married for so long. Okay. Couldn't agree on anything else. So here is this problem. As you can see, it's absolutely essential that you get those rules of logarithms, uh, properties of logarithms, arithmetic of logarithms memorized, ASAP. Put them down on cards. And it is time to go, and we will pick up on population growth Monday. So let's put Monday, Monday. Monday will be 426, the last week of class. Four, twenty six, twenty, twenty one. And then the other days, we'll spend Monday finishing this up. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we'll go over the practice final exam. So. There you go, gang. We're learning lots of stuff. And it's amazing how E shows up. I'll talk to you Monday, if not before. Bye bye. Hang around if you have questions, if you want me to go back over anything we talked about. But you know how to contact me. Okay, bye.